readings all Ferrari Man 601 here. Welcome to Mugello. Welcome aboard the Ferrari F2002. Now I've done quite a few videos featuring this fine automobile. However, I have wanted for a while now to do a proper review of it, and I just haven't had time with a very busy graduate school schedule and the like. So here it is, um, slightly truncated, most likely because I don't feel like spending all that much time blabbing on about a car in a video game. However, you get the idea. I've done a few of these before. The Ferrari F2002 was the Formula One car fielded by Scuderia Ferrari in the 2002 Formula One World Championship. It was designed by Ross Braun and Rory Byrne, driven by Michael Schumacher and Rubens Barrichello in the days of the Ferrari juggernaut from 1999 with their Constructors' Championship win all the way up through 2004 with their final Drivers' and Constructors' Championship win with the Ross Braun-Michael Schumacher combination. The F2002 was a worthy successor to the F2001, also designed by Braun and Byrne, and driven by Schumacher and Barrichello in that season. The F2002 was uh, first debuted in the 2002 Brazilian Grand Prix. The first two races of the year, Australia and Malaysia, were run by a modified version of the F2001 because uh, the team were putting the final touches on the 2002 machine. Nonetheless, over its competition history, the F2002 scored 19, uh, competed in 19 races. It scored 15 wins, 28 podium finishes, 11 pole positions, and 15 fastest laps. It's partially credited with the 2002 and 2003 Drivers' and Constructors' Championships because the F2001, of course, started the 2002 season, and uh, the first race of the year was actually won by Michael Schumacher in that car. And the F2002 continued its service all the way up until, I believe, the 2003 San Marino Grand Prix at Imola. I, I, I think that's true. I have to, I'd have to verify that. You can, you can Google it if you so desire. However, that's the car. Technical details. It's a V10, 3-liter V10, of course. This is, in my opinion, the height of the V10 era in Formula 1. Power figure is actually still classified, however, anywhere between 800 and 930-ish horsepower be expected is the Ferrari 051 3 liters as I mentioned 90 degree crank angle on the V10 red line at 19,000 rpm of course naturally aspirated it's mid mounted and it drives the rear axle only it runs through a 7 speed plus reverse semi automatic gearbox and the car in total weighs 600 kilos which for my American friends is 1323 pounds so, in other words, it's a thousand pounds lighter than a Mini Cooper. Put that into perspective. Carbon brakes all around, and of course it ran on Bridgestone tires on 13-inch wheels. As many cars did that year. Tire war in Formula 1, of course, in that year. As there was all the way up until the 2007 season between Bridgestone and Michelin. Any event, this car came to a set of Corsa at the uh, end of last year and I have had a ton of fun with it ever since. And now it's your turn to get my take on it. So coming out of the pit lane here at Mugello. I have the pedals, uh, the pedal trace in the lower left of the screen so you can see all of that going on as I drive the car. The gray bar on the right of that box is the uh, force feedback effects going on through my steering wheel. Still running my trusty Logitech G27. Green trace is the throttle, red trace is the brake, and all the way to the left of that box the blue trace is the clutch which we really will not be using once we are out on track.
And you can see on the steering wheel the uh, LCD display. You can see in the center there the uh, numbers that are scrolling very rapidly. That's our RPM on the crankshaft. The upper right we have our speed measuring in miles per hour here. The yellow bar below that is uh, our fuel quantity in liters. The big number seven in the middle is our gear. And then we have our tire pressures on the uh, four corners of the bottom of the display. They correspond to the uh, front and rear tires, respectively, from top to bottom. And as we cross over the line, up top you see we have a delta to our uh, last lap time. And then below that in the blue you see the uh, last lap of the actual lap time rather than the delta itself. still being careful bringing the tires up to temperature. We were sitting in the pit lane for quite a while, so they lost all of their temperature. And you can see shift lights come up. There you go. They light up a bright green for you, so you're not going to miss it. One twenty five, three three seven. Not a bad time. Of course, we are being a little bit conservative simply because of the nature of this outing. in terms of handling characteristics, the F2002, I believe, at the time was described by Rubens Barrichello as the best car he ever drove. And in fact, uh, in the early part of the 2003 season, when it came time for it to be replaced, he was actually quite upset that he would no longer be driving it in anger. Driving this version of the car in a Corsa, I can totally understand where 
Rubens was coming from. Now those of you who play this game a lot will be familiar undoubtedly with the MP413, the, uh, the 1998 McLaren that was released in the beginning part of last year. And at the time that I first found it, uh, I was amazed at how good a car that was. Twitchy, as uh, most of the late 90s cars were, but astounding with the way that it delivers its power and the gearbox and the uh, responsiveness on the steering through high-speed corners. It was amazing. This thing on a completely different level. We'll slow down a bit so I can stop shouting at you. I should explain I have uh, headphones in and it's actually getting very loud in them, so uh, what I'm going to do in the post-processing is uh, reproduce the engine volume as I'm hearing it, so the shouting will make sense in context. Anyway, this car is on a completely different level from pretty much anything else I've ever driven in a racing sim. CTDP's uh, 2005 Formula One mod for R-Factor 1 comes close, but to be honest, this feels even better than that. The, the responsiveness in every department, throttle response, braking, cornering, just the, 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 the dynamics of the chassis, the weight transfer and all of that, the tire performance, it's astonishing what this car can do. Like I said, you have about eight, 800, uh, 800 to 900 horsepower in this thing, and you feel it. We're in seventh gear right now, doing 76 miles an hour, full throttle. Thing still accelerates faster than most supercars of today. Again, you'd expect that because it's a Formula One car, whatever. The gearbox, absolutely astonishing. I understand that it's 2002 technology and that the gearboxes have moved on quite a bit since then. It's still so responsive. Half a second to go down four gears. It's not seamless. There is a gap in drive. But, uh, I mean, relative to today's cars, it's not a fair comparison. But in its day, would have been awesome. The amount of grip that you get, mechanically and aerodynamically, second to none. To be honest with you, um... This is leaps and bounds ahead of the MP413 that I mentioned. It's leaps and bounds ahead of any other car in Assetto Corsa, barring the uh, Red Bull X2010, but that's not even a real car, so it doesn't really count. In terms of the mod, you can see for yourself the modeling, the uh, textures, top notch. Absolutely amazing. I used to think that uh, Formula One Championship Edition on the PlayStation 3 looked good and it and it does still even though it's a 10 year old game now this is on another level entirely just look at the detail you get everywhere the steering wheel display you can read everything it, it gives you good information and as far as I can tell it's pretty accurate to uh, what it was on the real thing I've actually had the privilege of uh, getting up close and personal with an F2002 in real life and uh, I actually had a chance uh, I talked to the owner, he's a very wealthy individual, and uh, he was bringing the car on a tour of the United States. I talked to him for a while, and he gave me the opportunity actually to hold the steering wheel of the car, and uh, it looks like this, it really does. Other things in terms of the mod, the sounds, just listen to them. I've, I've been trying not to talk so much because I want you to hear this amazing soundtrack. And I mean, even though we're nowhere near max revs or full throttle, the immersiveness is just great. Hear the whine of the gearbox. You can hear the backfire on overrun. 
Tremendous. Of course, there's tons of wind noise, as you'd expect. You can hear the sounds from the transmission as we're going up and down through the gears. And I love the little bit of uh, vibration that you get on the upshifts. You now the little gurgle from the engine, the little trill that you get. Just listen to the upshifts here. You hear that trill on the upshift, that's what I'm talking about. That's authentic, 100%. Do one more quick lap and then we'll pit. Before I start getting criticized for lifting, the tires are not up to temperature. As you can see, we're uh, just about set to run out of fuel, so we will pit at the end of this lap. You can see down there, um, the lower left of the steering wheel, not the display, but the wheel itself. You can see a red light is on. That's the uh, fuel warning light. Again, that's pretty authentic. into the pits with us. Absolutely astonishing car. Uh, I know I've been a little bit brief with this review, but uh, again, I just wanted to show it to you in its essence. You've seen this car in a lot of my videos lately, so you know what it's all about. So that's the F2002. I just want to show you some uh, exterior shots if we can. There we go. Yeah, that's the rear. Um, still haven't quite figured out how to pan and tilt the camera while uh, in the actual driving mode in a Seto Corsa, but uh, the uh, tremendously good um, replay mode in this game certainly makes up for all of that. So. In any event, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you again soon.